excitement from the back row. We had all sorts of crazy stuff happening. Let's get the party started, shall we? Let's go down trackside to our tag team partners, Dave and Woody and Erica Allred. Thanks so much, guys. Talking more particularly about round 12, it did provide us with the utmost excitement. And Taven, the track got a little rough. We saw a lot of holes out there, but it provided for a lot of good battles. And you've been up in the booth all day analyzing the track and talking about the pro women's class. So what are you seeing with the track here tonight? And what are you seeing from our pro women's? Yeah, from seeing, looking at the pro women's, we definitely have a lot of good racing. Malinka Tua, Inanna Hogger, but some people that I'm really excited to, that are hitting pretty hard are Anna Wensloff as well as Carissa Blessum. So these two are going to be definitely going to be ones to watch. Carissa on the podium last night, but Anna Wenzloff looked really, really strong in her heats today. So I can't wait to see what they do. But when I was watching the finals, the finals were definitely getting a little rough today. There was walls that were forming. There was holes that were forming. So it's definitely going to be fun to watch for the pros. It'll definitely be survival of the fittest out there tonight, man, woman, and machine. But I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. But before we kick off all the racing action, I've got Chaplain Ethan Day here with a word prayer. Let's come to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for this amazing night of racing that's in front of us. And last night was so good. We saw so many, so many good racers uh, just passing, making their way up through the pack. And um, Lord, we just want to take this time right now to lift up our troops as they fight for the freedom that we have to be able to do and enjoy what we love. And uh, we just want to lift them up. And as uh, they're the, they're the real heroes tonight, um, Lord. Just, we just ask for a hand of protection over each one of these racers, uh, pit crews, uh, track crews, spectators, um, and that we just have an amazing night of racing. Um, Lord, first and foremost, we just want to prioritize you and uh, recognize that our, our victory can first come from you and um, because you gave us the, the passion and, and desires to go racing, and we're so excited to showcase uh, these racer skills. So, Lord, just please bless this night of racing, and in your name, Jesus, let's go racing. Amen. And I now have the pleasure of handing the mic over to Sergeant Scubin over here singing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who oh, said us that star-spangled banner yet yeah, wave Oh, the land of the free and the home of the And now I'm honored to be joined by Lieutenant John Layden. John, the U.S. Air Force and Snowcross have had a long-standing partnership over the years. So can you give me a little bit of insight of what you guys are doing here this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. So much like a snowmobile, you might look at it and think it's a big, cool thing that goes fast. Um, the Air Force and the Space Force have a lot of moving parts, just like a snowmobile. Um, and all these parts work together to ensure mission success. Um, and especially at a place like Snowcross is really special because there's a lot of uh, people who are technically minded, and that's what we're looking for. And we have some amazing young men and women standing alongside you here tonight, and they're going to be doing something called the depth swearing. So for those that don't know, what will they be swearing into tonight? So these young men and women are about to take an oath that everyone who enlists in the military will take. Uh, it's very important, and it essentially um, is their first swearing of an oath before they go into basic training. Well, Lieutenant, we are so thankful to have you guys here. So without further ado, take it away. Thank you.
Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, state your full name. Do you solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would, another big round of applause for our brand new United States Air Force recruits. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet your top five in the Amsoil Pro Point standings. Coming into this round 13 here at the ERX Snowcross National. He had a crash earlier on in qualifying, hoping for better results in the Amsoil Pro Triple Crown tonight. The rider of the Arctic Cat from Deer River, Minnesota for Woody's Racing is sponsored by Arctic Cat, Idaho and Foods, FXR, Sonoka Race Fuels, General Formulations and Nitro Lubricants. It is from Deer River, Minnesota, Daniel Benham. Dan, a hot and cold round 12 for you, but what were the takeaways that you can apply here tonight in hopes to return back to the podium? Yeah, uh, yesterday was a little bit of a tough day, but I, I really felt good about the way I rode. Uh, we just got to get off to a little bit better starts and be a little bit smarter out there. This track is uh, its pretty technical, and underneath it gets really hard. You know, it's like warm. Uh, it's pretty warm out here, but then the snow, it kind of freezes up, and it gets like an icy base. So. Just going to have to go out and attack and uh, be as smart as we can. Look forward to seeing you back out there. Best of luck. He came into round 12, third in the points. Now he is three back of third in the fourth spot, looking for some extra tonight. This is the rider from Chicoutumi, Quebec, Canada, riding for Warnet Racing on a skidoo. He hails from Chicoutumi and is sponsored by Makita, as well as Skidoo and FVP Parts, along with NTN, GMC, XPS, KYB, Enzo Canada, and Speedworks. He's got a couple of these Amsoil Pro Triple Crown overalls under his belt, looking to pull the hat trick and possibly get a third one here in round 13. Running the number 511, Jordan LaBelle. Jordan, a trying night for you last night with some crashes and mechanicals, but you rarely ever have two bad rounds in a row. So what's the game plan going into tonight to right the wrongs? I'm um, having a good start and finding some lines early in the race are always help to get a good final result. Best of luck out there. Now just three points ahead of LaBelle and sitting in the number three position is a rider from Grand Blanc, Michigan, a veteran campaigner aboard an Arctic Cat for the brand new Kylo Racing Team this season. Sponsored by Arctic Cat and Fly Racing along with Advanced Grain Handling Systems and Country Cat, Stein, and DDS Fluids. 
Sitting third in the Amsoil Pro Points, welcome the 727, Jacob Yerk. Jake, finally slotting into the top three in the points chase. You're inching closer and closer to that top step with every time out on track. So what's it going to take to get it done here tonight? Uh, it's going to take uh, a little less mistakes, some good starts, some good opening laps, and uh, you know, stay off the ground. So that's what we aim to do tonight. Looking forward to seeing you out there. Sitting just 11 points ahead of Jacob Yerk is the rider who is runner up in the points, 41 back from the point leader coming into this 13th round of the season. He hails from Saint Felicien, Quebec, riding a theme motorsport Skidoo. Sponsored by Skidoo, FXR, North American Trailer, Aluminum Cabinet Company, Classic Construction. Rolling Transport and CNA Pro Skis on the 220, Francis Peltier. Francis, we saw glimpses of greatness from you in last night's racing, but you just came up short. Any positives that you can take away from last night's Triple Crown rounds and apply here today? Yeah, for sure. The track uh, is a little bit different than all the tracks we raced so far, so it's nice to have some snow and actually race, so let's go. Best of luck to you out there tonight. <laughs> And currently atop the heap that is the Amsoil Pro Point standings is the rider from Bjurzon in Sweden. He's riding on a Polaris for Judnik Motorsports. We call him the king of the triple crown. He proved why one round to go when he won all three races. Sponsored by Polaris, Climb, Wild River Jerky, Core RV, SSI decals, and Cutler Express, the Moose. Aboard the number 31, Emil Har. Emil, you now have three consecutive wins in the pro class, but last night's win was particularly special as your mom and dad are in attendance from Sweden. So what did it mean to be able to get it done in a big way in front of them last night? Yeah, it means a lot to have them here. <clears throat> it uh, feels more like home. It feels uh, like more safe to have the family around them. Uh, yeah. It means a lot, and uh, I hope we can uh, have a great night tonight again. Uh, I mean, it's it's a small, tight track, so we all know that it will a lot of stuff can happen. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna do my best, and uh, hopefully be able to be close to the po podium. So uh, yeah, I will do my best. Looking forward to seeing if you can back it up here tonight. Best of luck. <laughs> Robbie, I heard two words describing this track. Different and technical. Take us around. All right, here we go through this start into a right-hander. Now, this is the section that dominated these racers last night. It was hard to get this triple right here. That was the, the difference maker. A little step up into the split lane. Now, when you jump into the split lane, inside, yeah, it's shorter, but there's a little bit more of a lip on that inside. The outside has a little bit flatter run at this finish line and into this huge triple. Go wide, go inside, either or. And that is a lap here at ERX. Getting assembled up on the starting line. We get things rolling tonight with round one. Qualifying for Pro White. Yeah, one notable name there, Nicholas Lorenz. He had a podium last night, but was in the lead. And you know, he owned it, though. That was the best part. He knew. He just got a little tired. It happens. We've had two long weeks in this track. I'm telling you, it was tough out there. Yeah, he got passed by Creighton Dillon and then Adam Ashline, who was also in this heat race, got him late. Kenny Mandrick is fifth in points, only three points ahead of Ashline coming into this round 13. All right, they're on the button, getting the pipes warmed up. Let's get ready to go green and go racing here tonight in Elk River. Good launch for Bailey Forrest, and he'll have the lead as they hit the back stretch. Look at Ashline making some moves on that outside, gets that triple. He's going to go right to the lead. Huge jump into that inside. Sending it, and Lorenz trying to elbow his way up into third. He does get the number three position, Kirchmeyer, and Forrest battling it out, or actually Lorenz will be back and forth. Three wide action there for a moment. Kirchmeyer going where no one else dared to go on the very outside edge, side by side, the split lane. Now look at Forrest fighting back, getting into the lead here. So this race is far from over. Ashline's got to go back to work. 
Let's see what happens here at the Emsoil finish line. Jump Force launches the big long jump and that gets him into that smoother, faster outside lane. But Ashline comes roaring back on that Elite Motorsports lead. But for Bailey Force, he has the race lead and he almost sketches out and he's going off track. And here comes Lorenz. Yeah, exactly. I was just gonna cut in there. Lorenz has a line. If you pay attention on that back section, he's able to single, double, double, and it makes all the difference. Yeah, and he went big there and took the outside to block off Ashline. So pay attention right here. He's going to go in, single, double out of this. Now he can double again. That is the difference maker. Look at the gap he pulls. A lot smoother line through there for Nick Lorenz on that West Coast Customs Club. Kirchmeyer almost tips it over there, trying to get to the inside of Ashline. We've got a couple laps left to go. Kenny Madrick sitting in fourth right now, and it looks like that's going to be Jordan Beast back there in the five spot. Yeah, Jordan Beast having a good ride, but this guy here, Nick Lorenz, starting where he left off last night. And he just has such a style out there. You can see as he goes over that tabletop. Uh, that was the halfway signal, not the two to go signal for this first heat race at Pro Light. So they saw the green as they came by the Emzo finish line that time. Lorenz working his way through the Ziggler Cat section and that double double line, man, that just looks silky smooth. Yeah, you got to slow down a little bit to set up for it, but the payoff is you don't get slowed down so much at the end before that step up, and he's making it work perfect. He's just in cruise control right now. I've got to think, too, I mean, you know, anytime you're doing a triple, you run the risk of casing it. That really could kill your momentum or just flat knock you off the sled. Yeah, it sure can, and I like the downside of that double. He can get a good ri uh, run at that uphill step up, and... Just sitting in cruise control. We got last lap here, so the Reds in complete control with a little over ah, four second lead, so. Yeah, and there was a bobble there for Adam Ashline where Kirchmeyer got by him, but now Ashline has gotten back by Kirchmeyer, so they actually sit in second and third as the checkers will come out here for Nick Lorenz, winning the opening race in pro light round one. Followed by Adam Ashline and then Kirchmeyer. Mandrick will cross for fourth. Beast will grab the number five position. And then Gallon and Forrest, who was up front early, remember, got uh, bucked off the sled and almost off the track. And then Colton Krejcik completes the field for this first Pro Light Heat race of the evening. So we get ready for heat number two. There is your winner from one round to go. Hoping that he doesn't have to do it from the back row tonight. Creighton Dillon on the number 96, the pride of Zephyr, Ontario. Yeah, that ride that he showed last night was amazing. Nothing short, he was on it. Came from way back. Seventh place is what we had him scored in on the first lap. So that was a, that was a special ride. But today's a new day. Clean up the little mistakes. Emmerich Legendre in here along with Oscar England, Tyler Uman, Evan Christian, Devin Denman in there, Trent Whitwer, Josh Shepard, and Drew Freeland. All scheduled for this race. Oh, wow. That was close there. Real close. And we might see a rolled up black flag. We might not. What I do know is Evan Christian has busted out to the lead on that KC Motorsports Polaris, and he's got company. Here comes Creighton Dillon ramping the outside lane. Yeah, and see how he stays a little lower there, carries a lot more speed. He goes over that finish line almost identical with Evan, and I think he's got the preferred line right now. Pay attention. He does. So he's going to go to the lead right now. And we could have a battle for second sooner rather than later. Evan Christian's got company in the form of Emmerich Legendre on the 144, and he's going to go to the outside of Evan here and possibly long jump it coming to the Amsoil finish line. They'll let it air out, but Christian jumped in ahead of him. There's some veteran savvy right there. Yeah, there sure was, and I'm really shocked nobody's picked up on that line that Lorenz was doing. It's a great opportunity to make up some ground, and no one has pulled that off yet. You see coming from fourth there, wearing the yellow and white gear. That is Drew Freeland on the skidoo, and pretty soon he could have something to say about this battle for second and third as Dylan pulls out by about a second and a half up front. Yeah, and right now everybody's, like I said, it earlier in the night, the, the track is so smooth. You can see everyone's kind of following the leader, staying on those outsides. It will change. That outside is not going to be the line to be in, and that inside's going to 
get a little faster. So pay attention. They're going to move around a lot throughout the night. And now it looks like Freeland within a couple of sled lengths there. Paris Skadoos may start battling it out for the third position. There's Legendre. And then there is the Freeland number 28 sled, the NCM machine. Powering his way in behind Legendre here. He's going to try sweeping the outside lane to see if he can get a run. He does there. Just not enough. Needs to pick up a little bit more in that back section. Stay a little closer as he enters that corner. And Meanwhile, while these two are battling each other, Evan Christian gets a little bit of breathing room between himself and Legendre Dillon. Extending the lead out just a little bit now, about a half a second over the past couple of laps. And you see Freeland, he's starting to creep into that picture. It's not too far off. A little closer this lap around. So two to go. He's got time to make it happen, but he's gotta, he's gotta figure something out right here in this section. He should. There are times when Drew Freeland has been blindingly fast and been in contention and he's trying to get a good result here or at least improve it up by one spot to go into the round two qualifiers. But now he's got to be careful because Trent Whitworth is sneaking up on him there as they come to the white flag. Yeah, Whitworth having a great ride. Found his speed just a little too late. Braden Dillon comfortably working his way around the track. Here he comes out of the FXR turn. Oh, look at that tail whip. Having some fun with it, baby. Dylan wins Pro Light Heat 2. Evan Christian in for second. Legendre holds off Freeland by a sled length in the battle for third and fourth. Whitworth will round out the top five. Then it's Oscar England on that Green Mountain Arctic Cat, Josh Shepard, and the number 72 of Devin Denman. One more heat to go here for our Pro Light competitors. And they will be getting ready to roll off the starting line. Included in the group will be Toby Posty on the Makita Skidoo. One notable there, Tyler Archibald. He had an injury last night, overjumped that finish line, and he received word he did break his wrist. Poor guy had quite the night going for himself. So you're looking Ooh. across the starting line, there's the Mystic uh, Lubricants. Number 129, Eric Downs. There's Jeremy Ballou, the uh, Brunt Da Silva. Number 122, they're in the field. Troy Corbani, Anson Shield, currently fourth in points, will be on the U.S. Air Force Amsoil Skidoo. Dylan Rose is the Lens Truck Center, number 12. Mitchell Gross on the 671 Arctic Cat. Now, one other rider, unfortunately, that we're not going to see in competition who had a great pro light career is Riley Bester, as uh, Riley sustained an injury as well and is out for this round 13 in the MSOL Pro category. Yeah, tough sport. A lot of injuries do happen, and hopefully everybody heals up and back at her. Not too uh, adverse to what happened to Riley there, but did see him on some crutches earlier. Looking at Anson Shield there as he's looking down the track. And they get the command to start the motors up. Countdown clock is running. Our man Jordan on the drone, making it happen. Just love watching races from here. And you're seeing what the racers are seeing right there. When that clock reaches zero, it's what? Three to five seconds before that green light pops on. That's right. Here we go. going to be nice looks like shield. shield yeah shield blocked out posty on the inside lane and that looks like that mystical lubricant sled of eric downs there in second and eric he's going to go where nobody else does here on the opening lap he goes to the outside and look at it pay off he gets a huge drive off of that outside line being a little shallower on the jump face so downs to the lead so eric downs jumps up to the top spot posty Dog fighting it back there behind Shield with Jeremy Ballou, and he's got company now as well. Her body on that Bikeman performance sled, trying to get up in the mix there as well. And look at Anson, he's following. He knows exactly the mistake he made. He didn't go to that outside line, gave up the lead. So, you gotta pay attention to that. 
But Posty riding strong right there in that third spot. Yeah, Posty tried to use that inside lane, couldn't quite get a rhythm through, and now here comes Jeremy Bolu. You could see him there for a second. He is literally right behind this battle, sniffing at the uh, rear snow flap of Topi Posty's sled as they blast back over the M's oil finish line jump. So funny, as they go over that jump, you really don't know who has the advantage until they go racing down that hill. Every time, it looks like Posty has it, but... Yeah, she a little bit smoother maybe through the rhythms there, but Topi finding a good line and some good speed, and he's not afraid to throw it in there alongside Shield if he can get there, but he's left the inside open for Baloo. Yeah, Anson's got to pick it up a little bit, though. Topi is actually rolling around this track a little bit faster. It's like right there, I think, is where it is getting done. Maybe not. Yeah, it is. It yeah. could carry a little bit more speed. So. Yeah, I, you couldn't have put a piece of paper between Posty and Bolu when he cut over in front of him coming out of that uh, Polaris turn. That was close. Yeah, it sure was. And I can tell you, he's using the lines that no one else is going to right now. Stay out of that roost and making up a little bit of time on po Posty right there. Eric Down still comfortably out in front here by almost two and a half seconds. He's going to come to the two to go signal this time. As he hits the M's oil finish line jump. Sled's looking smooth and fast for Eric tonight. Yeah, he's been on it all year. We've seen a little different spark in his eye. He's been riding strong and putting together some great rides. He's kind of steady Eddie, nothing too crazy, flashy, solid, blue collar type racing. And he'll see the white flag here, so he is underway for his final lap. Shield has uh, opened up a little bit of a gap on Posty here as we enter the final lap of this one, followed by Bolu, Morbani, and Rose. And then Mitchell Gross a little bit back behind them as you watch Anson Shield on that Anzo U.S. Air Force Skidoo. And there is your race leader, Eric Downs, and he will pop it over the Oil finish line, jump with a round one win. Shield got a little closer at the end, but settles for second, followed by Posty, Bolu, then it's for Body, Rose, and Gross, who will complete it as we wrap up round number one of Pro Light Qualifying. So there's a look at the results that we have for you. And that will bring us to set the table now for the first of our three Amsoil Pro Triple Crown events. It's a three race format. Race number one will be coming up after a little cleanup work. Let's take a little flyer around here, courtesy of Air Jordan, show you some of the stuff that you don't normally get to see, mainly the expanse of the CRX Motor Park facility, Robbie. Yeah, this facility is awesome. It is my favorite by far and not too far from where I live, so it's always easy to get over here and just take a look at this. This is Snowcross Heaven. If you've never been here to watch a race in person, you definitely have to make the trip. You can see the pro pit area off to the right here. Here's the vendor area, all sorts of stuff. Our friends from the U.S. Air Force and Zoil Hayes, Wild River Jerky, Core RV. A whole bunch of folks ride is back there as well. This is the tech area. And of course, you go under this bridge and then alongside the track itself to get to the starting line. And we got a big old crowd on hand here tonight. How's everyone doing tonight here in Elk River? They never pay attention to what the announcer says. There's some folks having some fun. We got some theme motorsports fans there too. I love looking out and seeing all that FXR gear. Yeah, that, that makes me smile. Check out that hat right there. Yeah. That is... Is that better than my cowboy hat? Yeah, that one does take the... Uh, take yeah, it. yeah. All right, you got hat of the night, bud. I'll concede. <laughs> there you go. Wrapped up in blankets, pit coats. Ready to watch the action. Our first Amsoil Pro Triple Crown race. The riders are taking their sight lap, and then they'll get their starting line picks based on qualifying earlier. So Adam Peterson gets first pick on the line tonight. And there's some more folks. I can see myself in those shades. Look at that. That is awesome. Hey, 
We got some Arctic Cat fans in the house. There you go. All right, Robbie, let's go through the Triple Crown 101 for our fans here at ERX and those watching on Flow. All right, we got three main events, seven minutes plus a lap. You finish what you get in your spot is your point. So you finish first, you get one point, so on and so forth. Lowest point total wins. Third main is the tiebreaker. And I emphasize that because that is so crucial. You're never out of this thing. That last one can flip-flop so much of your night. So really pay attention to that. And you've seen it last night. There was five riders going for it. They knew how important it was. And I did hear Adam Peterson headed back to the trailer thinking he didn't even have a podium. He ended up second. So always you're in it till the end. Now, the guy that has excelled and dominated in this format is right there. Your point leader, Emil Haar, racing for Judnick Motorsports there. And one thing that he does so well is great starter, obviously. But if he doesn't get a good start, he will position himself close to the front within that first lap and give himself at least a fighting chance to get up front and win that round. And that's what he does so well. So that first lap, if you pay attention to him, if he doesn't get a hole shot and comes around that first corner in like say fourth by that first lap he will be somewhere around that third second spot there's the rundown which was your qualifying rundown from earlier today and no jordan labelle number two qualifier today was uh, about a half a second off adam peterson but that was under different conditions than what we have now for racing right and last night having that mechanical was a tough break for him but three groups team has been through this before. Warner Racing's been at it probably longer than just about anybody, and they understand it's all part of the game. And for Jordan LaBelle, it has been probably what you would uh, call maybe the atypical rookie season because he's experienced some lows, mechanicals, crashes. But then when you go and win at the Skidoo Grand Prix de Valcourt in a Triple Crown format in your home country, you can't get any better than that. No, I'm sure that one felt good, but He's not thinking about that right now. He's thinking about getting out early. He needs to set the tone tonight. He's got good times, good speed, but he needs to sh pick up his aggression in that first lap. He really needs to assert himself as one of the players and put himself up front early. All right, they have gotten the call to fire the engines. Does, does this track layout, Robbie, reward the aggressive rider versus the patient? It, uh, yeah, aggressive, for sure. It's just such a physically demanding track. That rhythm section along the back is tiring. Every lap you turn, I'm sure the riders are thinking, one more lap, I gotta go through this thing. It's taxing on the body, and last night you saw Francis Pelletier, he went through that section better just than just about anybody. And I'm looking for more of the same tonight. Nice launch there for Hunter Patno, but he's going to get hammered up to the outside. Peterson grabs the stud boy hole shot in the race lead. But here comes on the inside, LaBelle. That's right, LaBelle making sure that he is going to be a part of this overall tonight. And look at Peterson, has that advantage, gets to go to that outside, but he doesn't gain that much. And LaBelle in goes to the inside. LaBelle trying to fight his way up there back alongside Peterson. Can't quite get there. Daniel Benham launched into the third spot, and now Benham changing lanes midway through the rhythm section, trying to come at LaBelle on the inside. Now switches to the outside, and he's got Peltier hot on his heels, and then Emil Haar almost got hit from behind by Jacob Yurk. And we have a race tonight, and Haar having to battle from the back now a little bit, but look at these guys up front. This is gonna end in some fireworks, I have a feeling. Early on in this race, six minutes and change plus a lap to go. LaBelle better at that time off the inside. Will it equate to the lead? Not yet. Once again on that outside lane, it is still faster for the Lavalli Red Bull Polaris of Adam Peterson. And LaBelle is able to get out of that roost by switching up his lines and keeps him in the hunt still. He might give up a little bit, but he gets clear vision and still gets to pin it a little bit. So right now it looks like huge advantage disadvantage now but he's still in the hunt this is some great racing here at the front of the field and meanwhile daniel benham has fallen a couple of seconds back these guys are definitely pushing the pace speaking of push and look at the moves evil heart wow. pushing his way up alongside benham couldn't walk the passing but that was aggressive that was aggressive but it was also timing he just 
No, he knew he had a little bit of a window. And look at this. Oh! That makes it happen. And Yurk winds up in the snow. I think that was Dan Benham. Or no, you're right. That was Benham. That was Benham. Kern has gotten ahead of Yurk, so Yurk's gone backwards a little bit. But the Moose moving his way forward here. He sure is, and he's going to be the one that you're going to want to watch out for because he is making moves. And it was Dan Benham right there. He's getting up in front of our leaders. And look at this. We have a new leader. Yeah, and they changed lanes for some reason. Uh, Peterson went inside instead of outside. LaBelle jumped on the opportunity to go to the outside lane and made him pay. Yeah, he sure did. And that is one of the options that you have with these split lanes that makes it so cool. And look at him launch way up into that hill. So right there. And speaking of launching, launching his way to the inside, now in the third spot with 415 plus a lap to go is Emil Haar. The Moose is getting loose now as he works Peterson for the number two spot. Look at that, makes that pass stick. So he is in second now. LaBelle's gonna have his hands full in another lap or two because Emo has found his stride and you can see all those bales and tough blocks in the way. They'll make their way back across the end soil finish line jump. The gap is 2.8 seconds and it looks like Venom is out of the running there. He just came across the track and went back over towards the pits. Yeah, unfortunate. Nothing dirty there though. It was a pretty clean pass. They locked skis. Unfortunately, Benham had nowhere to go and maybe has a little mechanical with that tip over. Yeah, that's the what he's racing Idaho and potato sled. Bad break for Benham, who has an overall win to his credit this season. Two of them actually, both in Salamanca earlier on. Jordan LaBelle on the Makita Skidoo number 511, the Warner Racing Sled performing well and he is actually starting to open up the gap a little bit on Emil Hart actually said somewhere in the neighborhood of about four seconds right now and what I'm seeing out of Hart right now is nothing uh, like I saw last night he's taking it a little bit easier he's just sitting there cruising I wonder if he's either feeling 100 percent or is there an issue with the machine right now because he had a good amount of steam going forward but this seems to be kind of sitting in no man's land right now. And as they work their way down, Emil Har chasing after the race leader. This is a battle for third. Peltier on Peterson, side by side out of the Polaris corner. Peltier will not be denied. Look at this, gets that triple. So he's going to move his way into third. Great pass, set up well, executed perfectly. Francis, he is one rider that will risk it. It pays off. He's so strong on that machine. Checking the interval here between race leader Jordan LaBelle and Emil Haar, and it's still at about 4.2 seconds. So LaBelle, with two minutes plus a lap to go, is managing that gap. He also has put Gustav Salston a lap down, and that lap sled is between race leader LaBelle and Emil Haar. Now with this coming down to the wire, we are hitting some lappers, so pay attention to that. LaBelle might have to change his lineup and not go in that preferred line. And that lead might get dwindled down a little bit. LaBelle, nice form here over the Amsoil finish line jump. As he works his way through that U.S. Air Force corner and then the Polaris corner that comes by where you enter the track. Kind of blitzing the rhythm section there that time. First time I've seen anybody do that here this weekend. Har going for the triple back there. And Har still riding strong, sitting in second. Maybe it's just not worth the risk right now. He's not feeling comfortable. Take your second, put yourself in that final overall. He still has two more races, so. Yeah, and that's big picture thinking right there, not only for Emo Har in terms of winning tonight's triple crown, but also being the point leader, don't do anything to sacrifice those precious points this late in the season. As we say that, look at this, Yurk found his speed, he's caught up to Peterson. So, Yurk trying to make sure that he salvages some points. This is gonna matter come later in the night, that podium overall. Now yeah, advanced grain handling, Kylo racing, Arctic Cat sled. Working the inside lane here through the U.S. Air Force turn and around the Polaris corner. And Adam Peterson had to back off for a second there as they were coming up on Gustav Salston on the 81. Your Dominator winner from the beginning of the season. That's going to tighten things up here a little bit for Yurk, and he's going downstairs. Oh, look at that. 
launches it, but just not enough yet. He's gonna go to the inside. He's been making this work. The clock is going to expire, which means the next time the leader comes by, he will see the white flag. Jordan LaBelle comfortably out in front of Emil Har as you get a look. He's making his way around the backside of the track as this battle for position continues. Oh, it's going to be close. Look at, I think Yurk might have the advantage. He does. Two to go. Uh, and Yurk, I thought uh, he might go and try to take the line away, and he actually bounced out of the lane, split inside, outside. Peterson tries to come back on the inside as the white flag waves for the race oh, leader. Oh. Wow. That was close. They banged together in the air and stayed upright. I have no idea how they did that, and still they're fighting on for third, fourth, and fifth here. Yeah, one lap to go, so it's going to come down to that rhythm section right here. He's going to get that down and then be able to go to the outside line. Meanwhile, here is Jordan LaBelle. He wins the first leg of tonight's Amsoil Pro Triple Crown by a handsome margin. Emil Har will take second. Peltier will finish third. Here comes the run for fourth. We ain't done yet. And Peterson's going to outgun him on the outside and take that spot away from Jacob Yerk. And you can see Yurk, he was excited. He knew that was close, just not enough. And how about LaBelle answering the bell? <laughs> well, you said, he had to get a, you said he had to get a good start. He had to have the focus on the first lap and be aggressive. Uh, I think maybe they, was he listening before the race started? <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm sure his crew are telling him the exact same things that I'm saying right now. All right, let's go back and take a look at the contact here. Har and you're just or Benham just getting tilted over. That's what scattered those tough blocks out there as well. Those FXR tough blocks. All right, let's go down to Erica Ulrey trackside with our first race winner. Jordan swapping positions and lanes in the opening stages of that race with Adam Peterson. How'd you get the upper hand in that heated battle and run away with it from there for the round one win? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I had a great battle with Adam. Uh, I felt a light on the side of the track, which I could uh, be lower on the ground and have more traction. And I sent that triple up the hill on the step up and uh, made the pass there. So yeah, it was a fun race. Looking forward to seeing you back out there in round two. Now, Jordan LaBelle coming away victorious here in our first Amsoil Pro Triple Crown race of the evening. The Amsoil Pro competitors will be coming back, of course, a little bit later for the second leg. We are setting the table now for our Pro-Am Women Final. And while they get their sight lap, those of you here on the grounds need to make a little bit of noise for our swag girls and boys. Hey, that rhymed. There they are. With one of the official pace vehicles, of course, for Amsoil Championship Off-Road, which visits right here at ERX Motor Park in the summertime. What a blast that is, man. If you've never seen Shore Course before. Yeah, that is a gorgeous track sitting over there. Something to behold. All right, you got to be a little bit louder. A little bit louder there. They've been around mod sleds for too many years. I'm glad we leave the throwing to the professionals. Speaking of professionals, we got a little company in here. Yeah. Eric Allred standing by has a pre-race before, report before we get to the Pro-Am Women Final. We had a new rider join the topic of conversation in our previous round, and it's the number 42 of Ava McCurdy. After three years in the making, she was finally able to capture her first Pro-Am woman podium. Although a rocky start to her season, she said that she's kept her head down and has been taking advice from none other than defending champion Malin Katu. Between the advice, her drive, and perseverance, everything was able to come to fruition, and she hopes to back it up here tonight.
Well, Robbie, we happen to see Tasha Lang standing on the podium in our class open here for the Prion Women Final, and she is standing between us right now, albeit on crutches, joining us here for our Pro-Am Women Final. Tasha, welcome aboard. Thank you for having me. Since I can't be out there, I figured I might as well make my way somewhere else where I can be used. So glad to be up here talking about what these girls are all thinking about and just the process of the Pro Women Final here. Yeah, the pre-race routine here, Did you uh, do you experience butterflies when yeah. you're getting ready to slot in and pick your spot? Yeah, I mean, I've been racing for 18 years, but every time you line up, you definitely got those jitters of one, get that whole shot, get out front and just stay strong throughout that race. It was always me and my dad on that starting line. So we had our little routine that we did every single time and just got to nail that 